All right, all right. It is Monday night, which means Monday night or Monday day is over. <clears throat> the worst of the week is past us. And I think I told you guys this in the last chats, but I have a crazy week this week. After Friday, I'm going to feel much, much better. But until Friday, I'm not going to be that happy because... I didn't get to work out today after work, which I usually do. And Monday is kind of like really big deal for workout because it like starts off my week kind of working off the calories that I put on on Saturday and Sunday when I cheated. <laughs> but I get to do that today because I had to stay after school. Uh, I usually leave at four and like around two o'clock and there's something like that. I had a, uh, another teacher say, hey, there's a student that can only come in after four. I was like, eh, I'm going to help the students, so I'll stay. Then, of course, the student never showed up. So about 4.45, I was like, you know what? I'm not waiting any longer for the student to show up. Peace. So I left, but it was too late to go to the gym. So I had to get home, get this kind of ready after I ate dinner, and uh, here we are. So, hey, Cliff, welcome. Um, I saw that... Uh, you had another big pay for play coming up. That'll be next weekend probably. <laughs> we actually had two big pay for plays come in today. So uh, that means next weekend's already full, folks. <laughs> and I like it. I'm looking forward to it too because both of the pay for plays are like they paid for the full video to be their, theirs. The, the reactions will be completely theirs. So we have two of those, actually three of those coming up next weekend. So I'm pretty sure... Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are all going to be like one person's requests. So I like that. It's going to be a battle. We're going to see who can come out on top. This is WrestleMania. <laughs> uh, but today we have five songs that we are trying to get back to from last week. And we're trying to catch up. And the first one that we have is actually uh, from a super chat that happened, I think, a week ago. 
um, in the super chat or in the chat, they paid for a super chat, which let me tell you right now, people, do not do that in the future. Um, I know this person didn't know, they didn't know. Actually, I had two people make a super chat, but one of them I think was from India and they paid, let me see how they paid in what's called INR, which is that rupee? I don't know what it is. INR. I don't know what that stands for. Uh, but it said 40 and I was like, wow, that's kind of a bit, right? I guess I'm going to do their pay for play. And then I did the translation to US dollar and it literally was like seven cents. <laughs> so I'm like, seven cents to do your request, bro? Ain't going to happen. <laughs> so we had two, but this other one that we're actually going to do because they paid in euro, which euro is better than the dollar, so, or higher than the dollar. So uh, this is Jason Butler. And Jason Butler, we finally got to yours. You asked about it, I think, on Friday or Saturday. You were asking when it was going to be. Well, here we go. This is the Hirsch Effect by Collapse with a K. K O L L A P S. Has anybody ever heard of the Hirsch Effect? And Effect also has a K, not a C. So we are going to hear these guys for the first time. For me, this is Collapse by the Hirsch Effect. So here we go, people. Certainly like it so far. Oh yeah, it, he did say this is uh, with a student orchestra, so students. Students from where, I don't know, but... A oh, cool little, like, beat there. Very kind of like ominous. Good word there, ominous. Yeah, it's got like a like the chords that are being chosen. The sound is very like. Almost like it's meant to be off pitch or something. Sasha when you need him. Sounds German. This is definitely the most unique, bizarre start to a song that I've heard. This is interesting. Yeah. you guys liking this too? What would you... Sounds like it's like Moulin Rouge. This is German, right? Fit. 
Fig. That's gotta be German, right? I don't know German, but. I'm liking this. It's avant-garde, Gabriel, but not like so out. It, it's got like a a consistency to it that avant-garde typ typically doesn't have. But I, yeah, that is very avant-garde. Like that. Yeah, it definitely has a groove. But like, it, yeah, there's all those other parts that are going on that make it very... I actually like this. This is like interestingly weird, but Interesting, very different from what we've heard on this channel before. Yeah, I can see that jump. A little thank you scientist because the horns and stuff like that, but a very slow tempo, slow tempo. I like this mix. just like it started package it's a good package not it was more of like a riverside package where it kind of stayed in this kind of situation but it was a package Interesting, Jason. Mr. Butler. Okay, Jason Butler doesn't sound like a German name, so... Well, is Butler a German name? Uh, so I'm interested, like, why you picked this, and... I mean, I can see the... the taste for it. I can definitely see why someone would like this. And I would even say, I like it. I would be interested if this is like their sound. Is this like who they are? Is this what they do all the time? Because I noticed there is a lot of potential for it to sound different from song to song because they have a lot of, I mean, I know there was a student orchestra, so I'm guessing this, the typical horn sounds and stuff like that are not there, which would then make what they do in a regular situation without an orchestra possibly very different than this. So are they different than this? Are there, is this their kind of their thing? Do they always have an orchestra that plays in the background? I would guess not. 
And if this is not them, why did you choose this song if this is not uh, kind of reflective of who they actually are normally? And if they aren't like this, I would be interested to hear what the hell they sound like outside of this situation. But this song in particular, I would put this on a playlist. The question is, which playlist would I put it on? Because it's not a ballad. It's definitely not like progressive. Uh, maybe I would put this on my like, the closest thing I think is like either maybe its own playlist or the house playlist, my house kind of like <laughs> house slow kind of, it sounds like something I would listen to while I'm studying or something like that, except for the very ending when he's kind of screaming a little bit, which by the way, that screaming was not off putting at all for me. It was actually not bad. Uh, maybe it was because it was lower in the mix or it wasn't long, but definitely liked it. So Jason, I'll give you a thumb and a half up for that one because that was good, but it also leaves me quite confused. <laughs> That's the only thing I can, I'm confused at like what I should think about it but I definitely know there's something about it that I liked. So that's, maybe I just need to hear more of these guys. The Hirsch Effect, the German band, because Junk said that it was German. So, I mean, the way the, the K is used is German kind of tipped me off. And then when he was speaking, it sounded German to me. Um, my stepdad was German and he used to, uh, oh, what did he used to say? Scheizhikov, Scheizhikov, he used to say to me. What a, what a fucking dick of a stepfather. Call him uh, stepson Shajakov. I think it means shithead, right? And then uh, figi, fig day, figi day, figi day. He's like fuck you or something like that. I don't. Again, I don't know German, but other than guten Tag um, and das wiederholen, which is like to repeat that. I think I learned a long time ago. <laughs> anyway, that was cool. Let's move on to the next one. Um, who do we have up next? We have Manuel Romero from the. Hispanic background, <laughs> change languages and cultures. And he has a band called Scardust. Never heard of Scardust. I've heard of Seven Dust. I think Seven Dust is like pretty heavy, right? I think they opened up for, um, uh, what is her name? With the arms wide open, Creed. Yeah, they opened up, I think Seven Dust opened up for Creed at one point. I never saw them live, but my friend went and saw him. He was like, there's this band called Seven Dust that opened up for him, and they were crazy. <laughs> but this isn't Seven Dust. This is Scar Dust. It's a band from Israel, he says. He says, um, it's called Concrete Cages is the song from their last album, Strangers. Came out last year, so it's a pretty new release. And it says the song has a hurdy-gurdy which I think is a very unique instrument to feature in prog metal. I don't even know what the fuck a hurdy-gurdy is. And it was actually played by a YouTuber, Hurd, Pat, Patty Hurdy, Patty Hurdy. So that sounds very Irish. Hurdy, Patty, Patty Hurdy, hurdy-gurdy just sounds very Irish. So maybe this is an Irish song from Israel. <laughs> this is fucking awesome. <laughs> All right, so here we go with some Scardust, baby. Here we go. Okay. Fire me, mate. This is decent, as the Irish would say. This is decent. My Irish friend in Korea named Chris would be like, oh, it's decent. Okay. I like the mix. This is a page in the diary of a world that was chaos and void before we came about. Predators roamed in the wild. We were fragile like a child before we came about. Many have died on the tries. Many have looked in the 
certainly like the instruments. And I like her voice. I do feel like the voices are really too up in the mix. It's like drowning out the other stuff. Nice. Dum -dum. I definitely like the instrumentation. She's got a good voice. Fire rages. Set a little weak on that one. Yeah, Adrian, I'm trying to gauge how I feel too. She has a good voice, but I agree. It kind of is like good guitar there. I definitely feel like the voices are too far in the mix, too forward in the mix. The, the instrumentation is definitely good. That uh, double bass is very compressed, very compressed. Like this part? Good mix of progressive with Irish. Cool though. Din Child, I would say this sounds more like Irish Nightwish. <laughs> that was, oh, boom. That was cool. Very cool bass right there. Yeah, that sounds like a mix of Nightwish and Irish.
course, the singer's not as good as Nightwish, but... This is not bad. Huh. Um, dude, we are in the twilight zone, I feel like, today. <laughs> Maybe because it's Monday? Uh, but that first song was definitely very different than what we we're normally doing here. And that was definitely unique to what we normally do here. And I would say I like the first one more than this one. And I'd say it got better as it went on. So that makes me wonder if I listen to this more, if it would get better and better. Maybe it was just that it was like that mix of the hurdy-gurdy, as they call it, the hurdy-gurdy and like the Irish feel with progressive. I've never really heard that before. So maybe that's why it took a little bit for it to kind of like sit with me. And then once it did, I, my only negative critique of it is uh, when she tried to hit those high notes, she sounded pretty weak. Uh, but her voice was good, but I think Adrian said it like, I don't know if it really fits with what they were doing. Um, yeah, so I, that, that lends me to believe like, I like it and I think I could like it more if I listen to it more. However, there's one caveat to that. When it comes to Irish bands and Irish music, I feel like it's the... Uh, the techno trance kind of music in that every song sounds exactly the same <laughs> to me, almost exactly the same. And so I would be nervous that this kind of shtick would be like just too repetitive. Like every song would sound like this, um, but I could be wrong. So I guess what that means, Mr. Romero, is you have to maybe give me some different stuff from these guys or some more stuff to kind of ease me into more of it to maybe see how my brain kind of, cause I'll definitely say that the second half of the song, I started enjoying it more and kind of connecting with it more than the first half. But maybe that was because it was so unique and different. So right now we are two for two for uniqueness today. That might be the name of the, uh, of the uh, live kind of situation. Pay for play today is unique, unique. So yeah, uh, we are gonna move on to the third one of the night. And here we have Mr. Colin. And Mr. Colin, first up is Bruno Valverde, Valverde, who is doing a drum playthrough of Angra's Upper Levels song. It says he is playing to a backing track of the song, so the drums are way higher in the mix, which is kind of like that uh, other song I listened to uh, by Vola right um that i wasn't paying attention to the music because i was paying attention to the drums so if this song ever comes out again and i don't recognize it's because again the drums are what i'm going to be focusing on because this is a drum playthrough it says he's 28 years old in this video and the guy is super talented so we are going to see this drum playthrough which by the way uh colin did contact me and say how do you feel about doing drum playthroughs uh, hello, I'm a drummer. Yes, of course, I'm into drum playthroughs. If you had a guitar uh, song that you wanted me to just watch a guy play guitar, I'd hell yeah, I'd be down for that. And I'd give my critique on that or bass or something like that. So it doesn't have to only be music. It could be like talented people doing other songs or maybe their own stuff uh, just on one instrument or something like that. I'd totally be down. Like I'm sure all of you guys have heard of the do, right? So I've been watching a little bit of the dude's channel because it's fun. He plays a lot of dream theater and the dude is just outrageously good. He just did a 
live stream with uh, Herman Lee a couple weeks back or something like that. So he's just a guitar player that's on Omegle. Is it Omegle or Chatterbait? Chatterbait? <laughs> One of those things that I never get on. Um, and it just kind of like plays. And now there's an, I saw another one where there's like a piano guy that's doing piano stuff, which is not nearly as good as the do. He's trying to copy it and doing okay, but he's not as good as the do. He has to stop a lot and pay attention to the song before he can play. Whereas the do seems to know fucking everything. Um, yeah, I do. I know he gets loads of weenie. He always talks about it. It's kind of funny, but so anyway, my point in telling you guys that is Everything is on the board here. Like I said, if you want to show me a rap song, anything, I'm down. We don't only have to stick in this narrow path. So that being said, let's get to this drum video of Angra and let's see this dude and how good he is. All right, here we go. I like that bass part. Ooh, got a little Latin feel here. Oh, traditional grip. To be honest, I hate traditional grip. Especially when you're playing this kind of music. <laughs> Just fucking play rock and roll, dude. Ooh. His uh, quads are definitely tight. I gotta turn this shit up. Kind of low. Nice. <laughs> Dude, I love those. Nice. Ghost notes. Good stutter there. Nice. Yeah, not only is it uncomfortable, it just looks dumb. Nice. I love that on the off. Yeah. Back to those ghost notes. Mm. Nice linear playing right there. Ooh. Ooh. Nice stutter there with his hands. Nice switch there. His timing is really tight. I like the song, even though I'm not paying too much attention to it. Good, good, good harmony there. Nice. See, dude, just stay like this. Don't go back to the traditional grip. He's married. At least he wants you to think that. Dude, nice. Nice, man. He's got some chops. Definitely got some chops. 
Not Tony Royster chops, but he's got chops. Oh, that was good. You should smile a little bit more. Have some fun, dude. Don't concentrate so much. Dude, I fucking love those stacks. Those stacks sound so good. This sounds very progressive. And I think anger, I think more heavy and cornish. But that's because I don't know anger. But this sounds very progressive. Oh, nice. <laughs> Nice. Nice. I like this. Ooh. Kick ass, dude. All right, uh, yeah, it's always uh, so interesting when you see these guys because obviously this guy would be in the, I don't know, top 5%, 10% of drummers in the world. Obviously he's in that top 10%, 5%. Um, so when you get up into that range and you watch videos like this, it's hard for me to like comment deeply on it because Number one, I don't know the song. Like, is he playing exactly what the original drummer played? Is he the original drummer? I don't know. See, that's what I don't know those things. So I can't really compare it to anything other than just like, wow, it's good, obviously. Um, his chops are very tight, very clean. Um, his quads are good. His ghost notes are good. I mean, he's obviously in the top 10 to 5% of drummers in the world because of that. Um, so it's hard to comment deeply on it because if like another drummer, it sounds, he said a drum playthrough. So I don't know if it's the original drummer just playing to his stuff. Maybe you could tell me in the comments. Um, but yeah, uh, if he, if it was like he was covering like the original Angra and I could hear like what the difference was, then I could comment on it, but I don't know the song as far as like the song, even though I wasn't paying attention to it too much. I would like to hear this song just by the song because I actually liked it. And the other Anger songs I just thought were so-so or okay. But this song I definitely would be interested in listening to because that was, Gabriel says Angra is prog power metal. Okay, that one didn't feel like power metal as much as prog to me, but again, I wasn't listening to it. Um, yeah, so again, I love these kinds of things, but also I'm gonna say when a drummer's this good, I mean, there's not a ton of stuff you can say because they're not going to fuck up. Obviously, it's pre-recorded. So they're not going to fuck up a lot. And uh, yeah, he's freaking amazing. That's why he's playing through this. Uh, but I do like it. I enjoy it. So anytime you guys want to send this stuff to me or guitar players or something like that, I mean, hell yeah. I definitely couldn't play this. <laughs> not even close. And speaking of, maybe sometime I'm going to throw on here me playing drums when I was in Korea. It's kind of funny. <laughs> and you guys can all critique me and laugh at that shit. All right, so we have one more song for today. Uh, and this is also by Colin. Or no, 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 no. Wait, do we have two songs? 
I think we have two songs left. Yeah, that was only the third song. Um, let me see where we're at with this. Um, I think this next song is by Colin as well. Yes, we have one more song by Colin, and he says, next up is a new band that I really like and enjoy. I wouldn't put them in my top 10, okay? So listen to this, people. It's not in his top 10, but he likes them. Uh, they're Danish, and they are called Europe's Answer to Dream Theater a lot. That's interesting, and I thought you could be the judge of that comparison. Okay, so... If they're Europe's answer to Dream Theater. Very interesting. The band is called Anibis Gate. Anibis Gate, and the song is called Dodecahedron. Hedron. Dodecahedron. So here we go with Anibis Gate. An Anubis Gate, I think is what it is. Let's try it out and see if they sound like Dream Theater. I played funk and soul. We did covers. Okay, I can see the Dream Theater comparison. than Dream Theater with the uh, electronic slash whatever in the background. But the singing... I like it. Yeah, okay, I like this part. Switch there. I can see, yeah, I, I see the Dream Theater comparison, but it is definitely different enough. A lot of the keyboard is very Dream Theater like. Pretty cool. It's got that awake. Good harmonies. Woo. Jeez. What a vibe. Like this part. Yeah. 
Yeah! I like this! Oh, nice clip! They definitely have more like electronic industrial stuff than Dream Theater, at least in this song. I like it though. Good, back to that. Good. Good layers here. Interesting. Ooh, nightmare to remember. <laughs> All right, so Colin, I definitely dug that. Definitely dug that. So I'm definitely going to put that on a playlist and listen to it more because it had enough changes, but it had a home base that it kept coming back to that made it a well-written song structure-wise. Um, as far as the comparison to Dream Theater, I think I already said, to me, Circus Maximus is way more close to Dream Theater than this, but you said this is Europe's version of that. Where is Circus Maximus from? Where are they from? Uh, they to me are like the at least from what I've heard the closest thing specifically the guitar player is like a Petrucci clone um, but in this band I would say I think it was Cliff that said it let me see yeah Cliff said uh, sometimes the singer sounds like James Labrie you can hear that a bit I would actually say he sounds better than James <laughs> in this song uh, I, as far as the tone, I like his tone better and the way he pronunciates certain vowels better than James. Um, but I didn't get a huge DT feel, but it was in the ballpark. Let's put it that way. It was in the ballpark. Um, but definitely some more differences than similarities, I would say. Uh, so yeah, that's my take on that. Definitely like the song though. Definitely want to hear more of those guys because you could tell that they were good at writing the songs and obviously they had uh, some technical ability. So, all right. Um, here we go with the last song. And luckily, uh, this last song is something I'm definitely going to enjoy. I don't know if you guys are going to enjoy it, but this comes from Mr. John Feedy. Mr. John Feedy says, um, I can't find anything except the official video for this one. Fuck. There is one non-official, but it is a full minute shorter than it should be. So that's a no-go. Okay. You will probably need to do the blackout video thing, which I did. It's called, uh, so what's the effect called? Lima or something like that? It says, but anyway, this is the first Caligula's horse song that I've heard, that I ever heard. I listened to it on repeat for a week. So this is called, which by the way is on the album that I'm trying to finish. This is called Turntail. And I've seen this come up. Actually, somebody brought it up in a comment section yesterday about how I need, or maybe it was today, about how I need to finish this, which I'm going to. And Turntail is one of those songs on that list that I'm going to have to listen to. So I'm getting a Nice little treat today, and so are you guys. So let's see for all of you um, Caligula's Horse fans if you can predict whether I'm going to love Turntail. Am I going to like it? Okay, Paravarium says Turntail is so fun. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best Caligula's Horse song I've ever heard, 
what would you guys think I'm going to rate this one in the plethora of Caligula's horse songs that I've heard now? Okay, so Adrian says I'll like it. Junk says I'll like it. But give me a number, like nine. Remember, nine is my highest. Okay, he says six to seven. That's interesting. All right. And start throwing up your numbers while we go in to listen to this. So here we go with Turntail. <laughs> Eleven. that guitar is the memorable part of the chorus, not the voice or the melody. Sounds like resonate. Not fucking wait to see these guys live. 
I'm probably gonna be crying the whole fucking concert. Love this ending. Wow. Okay, so in the grand scheme of Caligula's horse songs, it's definitely not above Dream the Dead or uh, Hands of the Hardest, Resonate, Capulet. Oh, fucking Capulet, man. I've been listening to Capulet nonstop. But I would say in the grand scheme of things, I'd give this, if like Hands of the Hardest is like a nine, then I would give this like a seven and a half. And the only reason it's not an eight, because I would say it could very easily be an eight, is that the chorus doesn't have like a major, beautiful, blasting through the fucking orbit chorus. That's like one of their, you know, sticks, one of their staples that makes me love them. And again, I don't think it has to be like that in every song because then that would get too redundant. So I'm glad they didn't do that in this song, but it's still going to make it like a seven and a half for me versus it could very easily be an eight if it just like, you know, just had that. It had a couple cool parts that were like really just like, oh, I can feel the emotion and the beautiful chords that they choose. But the chorus was good. It just wasn't like epic like they can normally do. Like Valkyrie. <laughs> that song is always awesome too. I know a lot of people don't like that song as much, but I love them. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that we got to listen to Turntail, which means, you know, when I do listen to this, I'll probably skip it or maybe I'll do it again. I don't know. Um, I have to do Bloom with Marigold, of course, because I got fucking roasted at the stake for not doing them together even though i didn't know um but yeah i'm definitely looking forward to that and for those of you who are asking in the comments um about the new vola song yes somebody did pay for play it's just gonna have to come next weekend because we are definitely backed up so like i said at the beginning of the uh the hour uh we had two more pay for plays come in that were five songs for each person so that's another 10 songs that we have coming up next weekend and we already have another person from last weekend that have five songs so next weekend we definitely have three pay for plays that are all going to be individual suggestions and then we'll wrap up with those other songs which is where probably vola will come in uh either friday or saturday so yes vola is coming it sounds like some of you are a little wondering if i'm going to like it or not we'll have to find out because vola is certainly freaking awesome on my list but that wraps us up tonight uh monday night is officially over we are at an hour's time hopefully you guys enjoyed it with me i enjoyed it as always and uh keep them coming uh, i'm enjoying this a lot and this journey is fun for all of us so i think i'm losing my voice though i can hear it um so have a great rest of the week and just join us here on friday night most likely and saturday morning and sunday morning and probably monday again so we're going to be doing another four-dayer, I think, uh, because it seems like all those uh, pay-for-plays are coming in. So I hope you guys have a great night. Don't drink too hard. Kiss your sister or brother, whoever. I mean, when, <laughs> I meant like hum, human sister overall, not like your sister. Okay, that's a bad way to end it. Anyway, you know what I mean. Have a great week. <laughs> Peace.